Hello, this is Andrew with MissingRemote.com. Today we're going to have a look at the Internet Security section of the UDM and UDM Pro. Uh, most of this is very similar to what you can do with a USG and Udify, but there are some key differences in here. and that, That's mostly what we're going to talk about, and then also I'll try to highlight the areas where there is an advancement in the feature set with the um, UDM Pro. Um, the first section here is the threat management. This is the IDS or IPS. This is one of the major reasons why you or I certainly would pick up a UDM or UDM Pro versus a USG is it can do sustain much higher throughput using IDS or IPS because it has a much more modern CPU or SOC in it than the um, USGs do. Um, I have it dialed up all the way, mostly here to, to make a point here uh, around how it works. I have a DNS query queued up here, which should cause a IPS alert to pop up, and there we go. Um, that's straight out of the Unify's documentation around how that stuff works. Um, there aren't many differences here between what you can do with the USG versus what you can do to UDM Pro. The main thing to take away from this is that if you have an internet connection which is more than 300 megabits per second then you can actually use that bandwidth above 300 megabits per second uh, with IPS turned on. GOP, GOIP filtering is not new either. Basically you can block countries using this feature from your from accessing your network. To do that is really easy you just kind of pick a country you don't want to receive traffic from like let's go for North Korea and let's block it and then we're done. If you want to take a country off the list you just unblock it and we're done. That's all there is to it for this. Um, I assume that this works. I don't really have a way to test it though. So let's get back to our internet security section. So DNS filtering is a pretty neat feature because it lets you do the kind of thing that you can do on a USG where you force all of your DNS through a single approved DNS resolver. Um, I use Pi-hole on my networks. I'm using Pi-hole on this network as well, but because the US UDM and UDM Pro can't do DNAT rules, you can't use the device, the UDM, to force everything through your Pi-hole and then masquerade and all that other stuff. This feature gets really close to that. The main difference, though, is that you can't choose your own DNS provider. It uses a DNS provider that they don't disclose with um, a few different types of filter settings, security, adult, and family. If we look at the UDM Pro, setting up a, um, just tailing the, the message log, looking for the DNS filter, let's quickly turn it on. I have to turn it off every now and again because there's a bug in the version of the firmware that I'm running, which is admittedly a testing version, uh, where it, uh, DNS filtering just kind of stops working occasionally. So let's tail this, and then we'll do a DNS lookup. Let's see, something that nobody would have ever looked at. And so here we see a bunch of messages in the uh, log file. And it indicates DNS filter, and then we look at our destination, which is, I have a security. This is LAN, it's security. So what we can do, or what I did do, is I search for the IP address, but I search for the IP address of the children's or family network. And I came up with clean browsing DNS which is this service here, which has family filter, adult filter, security filter. So reasonably confident that they're just kind of using the free version of the clean browsing service. There are some pluses and minuses to this. Uh, one, you have absolutely no control over what's blacklisted and what's whitelisted, and it's very much a black box. And when this is turned on, even if you have a different DNS provider set up, you can't use it. 
So I, as I mentioned before, I have a pi hole set up. I am using OpenDNS to resolve, um, or I have OpenDNS set up in pi hole to resolve. But OpenDNS provides some ways to check to see if you're using OpenDNS or not. And clearly we can see when we go to their test site, we're not using OpenDNS, even though PyHole is resolved. We're resolving DNS through the PyHole, which is supposed to be using OpenDNS. It's just getting overridden by this black box solution from that, that Ubiquity have uh, turned on here. So I don't like that that it doesn't have the flexibility to just kind of use my own or DNS. Fil what I'd love to do is just DNS filter to open DNS um, after my pie hole is used to block all of the uh, ad spam and trackers and things like that. But that's not really an option. You do get the ad blocking and um, track anti-tracking stuff through pie hole, but it, it all goes through this... Um, clean browsing DNS uh, resolver and not whatever you, you want to use, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Hopefully, I mean, you can see here, this is an alpha feature. Hopefully this is nowhere near done and they will expand this feature to let you use your own providers um, and blacklist, whitelist, all of that sort of thing. So hopefully that we will see more of that. So I'm going to turn this off just so that it doesn't keep breaking stuff. Uh, we go to the deep packet expansion. This is an area where there's been significant improvement versus um, the USG. And th this existed in, in the USG, but what you couldn't do before is you couldn't, so let's say I want to block social network. So in the, in the USG, you just block a category. So you block all social networks, which maybe you want to do that, but I generally don't. Um, here you now can block on an application level. So if I want to block Twitter, I can do that, enable this restriction, set it to my restricted group, which I have assigned to my LAN. So before I turn this on, let's just quickly check to make sure that I can get to Twitter. Twitter loads up, no problem. So let's turn this on, we'll block the traffic, apply, and then we'll open up our browser, go to Twitter, and we can see here that the request will time out. I won't be able to resolve Twitter, which is brilliant. So you have a lot of flexibility now to add a huge amount of different options um, for all, all of these different things. And if you want to do it at the um, category level, you still can do that. So if I want to block all tunneling and proxy service, I just all applications, turn it on, and I'm done. So that's a massive improvement over what you could do with the USG, and I'm really pleased to see that. And I plan to use this going forward once I can actually use this thing properly. Uh, the network scanners is another new feature with the UDM or UDM Pro. This is not present with the USG. Basically, it sets up, they call it honeypots. You put them on their network, and they listen on a bunch of different ports. Um, HTTP, HTTPS, SSH, just to name a couple. Um, that's documented. If you were to hit one of these sites, I have one set up per network right now. So if you go to the threat management section and Honeypot, you can see where I've been playing around with the, this feature. Um, it's kind of a neat thing. I don't know how useful it is on a home network but in an enterprise network, you would definitely pick up uh, scanners this way. While we're here, this is one of the things, another nice thing that um, the UDM and UDM Pro do is they note all of the systems on your network, which is not new, but they, can, they try to identify the operating system. And this is controlled. through here with the endpoint scanner. So that's kind of a neat, a neat thing. Advanced is where you manage the IPS and IDS signatures, both a suppression and um, you can create whitelists. Um, I don't tend to create whitelists. I'm, I'm not sure 
if that's a just a personal thing. I do suppress signatures occasionally, uh, mostly the header kind, a uh, malformed header. My tel my LG television has a typo in its header, and so um, I do suppress that one on the uh, on my USG. To manage this, the threat management, you can either create a whitelist here, or you can go to the threat management section via the traffic log. Um, here we can see some of those uh, alerts that I was throwing up before. We have some options and what we want to do with it. We can suppress it, which suppresses the signature and then puts an item in the suppression list that we just looked at. We can block it, which creates firewall rules, or we can blacklist or whitelist this traffic. I'm going to go ahead and block it so we can see what that does, which is after we block it, we go back to the firewall section. And here we can see the rules that were just created because we chose to, to block the traffic. If you do that by mistake and you want to undo that, you can always just remove it. Or if you want to make it a little bit a wider definition, you have the option to go in and edit the rule and um, expand it beyond whatever the, the scope of the alert. That's pretty much all there is to that section. Hopefully you found this useful. If you did, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, something I didn't address that you want answered, just drop that below and I'll get to it as soon as I can. Thanks.